actually going to start our unit uh, with Mason Flow of Matter. We're going to be looking at fluids today. So what kinds of fluids do you guys use in your everyday life? Water. Water. Good Milk. one. We need to drink. Milk. Milk is pretty tasty. What about some, some other fluids? Maybe something that doesn't flow as well. Maple syrup. Bigger. Maple syrup. Mm, tastes Shampoo. Like Shampoo. Good, good. So which of those do you think would be the most dense? Which is the thickest? Maple syrup. Sarah, or shampoo? Shampoo. Depends what brand. True. Depends what brand. Good point, good point. So how do we tell if something is really dense when it's a fluid? How would you tell? Can you see if it's dense just by looking at it, or do you have to do something to it when it's hot? If it's heavy. If it's heavy. Pair it to other things. You could pair it to other things. You could maybe pour it out and see how fast it comes out. Things that are things that are gonna flow more slowly are a little denser. Do we know why this is? We've talked about the properties of of particles. So what what happens when particles are in a fluid? What do they look like? So if this is our container, are they really close together, like this? No. Are they really far apart? They spread out to occupy the space. Yeah, they're within the space, kind of moderately, right? So if something's really dense flows more slowly, the particles more are particles. Particles together. There's more particles in that volume, mm -hmm. right? Because then they're going to they're gonna rub against each other, and that's what's going to make it really dense. So what do you guys think this is? This is our demo for today. What is this? What's in this jar? And, yeah. It's a little hard to tell, so we can kind of slide mm -hmm. it around. Don't shake it yet. It's a little oily, so I'll give you guys some Is it orange juice well. on top? Yes, yes, the top layer is oil. Oh. Now, why is the oil on the top? It's the least dense. It's the least dense, okay. So, the, what does that mean for the layers underneath? They're more dense. They're more dense, okay. So, what, what do you think this bottom layer might be? Honey. Honey? Uh, yeah. Honey, mm. do you agree that it's honey? Cornstarch. Cornstarch. Cornstarch is that, that powder, right? Corn syrup, syrup. I think is the yeah. liquid mm. you're thinking of. Corn syrup, yeah. So, yes, yeah. the bottom layer is honey. Next layer is actually corn syrup. What might this other layer be? We mentioned it earlier on pancakes. Syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. syrup. Yeah, it's really hard to see. <laughs> Our next layer here, which it's really hard to tell, but it's uh, green, it is actually dish soap. Ooh. What might the layer above the dish soap be? Coffee. Water? Coffee, good guess. Water, exactly. So it's actually colored water. And the reason that that dish soap is so hard to see, what, what might have happened between the dish soap and the water? Like oh, it mixes night. together. It, it together. started to mix together. So it was layered nicely because of the densities, but the water actually interacts with the soap, and I started to lose that layer. All right. Very nice. Thank you. So that's looking at that density. So that's why they layer. So there's, is there a lot of particles or very few particles in this bottom layer? Lots. There's lots of particles. Like I said, it's density, right? Because density is your... Uh, your grams per milliliter. So that's why it has to be mm. weight. So if you pick something up and it's super heavy, it's a little more dense, right? Um, I had objects previously to float on my density layers. I lost them, however, which is really sad. But we're going to look at a similar concept using this bottle of water. So can anybody tell me what's inside this bottle of water? Ketchup. And why might have I put a ketchup packet in here? Can you tell me why? I thought it was so you can read the label, but... Read the label? Yeah. <laughs> so, you want to give that bottle a squeeze for me? And tell me what happens. Squeeze really hard. So, what's, what's the packet doing? It's moving. It's moving. Why is it moving? Uh, it must have a different buoyancy or density than water, I guess. It does. But what happens when you squeeze this bottle? What's happening to the water? What am I doing? Oh, you're making I'm it more dense. It. All right, so what am I doing to the, to the packet? What is the water doing to the packet? To the packet? Oh, relative density. Yes, so I compress the water. I'm making the water pressurized. The water then presses on the packet and changes its density because there's a little bit of air in these packets and it compresses it. So the pressure in that goes up, its density goes up, and it sinks. So that's what happens. And you can actually, you guys can pass it around, play with it a little bit, squeeze it, see how much pressure the the top will pop off. Um, see how much pressure it takes to make it sink. Um, if you can make it float in the middle, how much pressure that takes. 
All right, good stuff, guys. So, um, because I don't have my objects, we're gonna look at another thing that I prepared. So what might be in this bottle? Kool-Aid. The Kool-Aid, good guess. Dish soap, not quite. So this mm. is colored, and this is its natural. Oh, yeah, like powdery, like juice? Yeah, this is actually colored water. Good guess oh. on juice. I could have used juice. You wouldn't want to drink this though, because this top layer is baby oil. So that's why it's clear, but it sits on top of the water because its density is what? Less. Less than the water, yes. Like how I look at Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Yes. So, what's going to happen if I shake this bottle? It's going to like bubble together slash mix, okay. but then it'll separate so it, again. Is it going to become a mixture? Is it going to become a solution? No? Why not? Because, well... You don't have a binder, but because it's just, they're going to separate back out again. Because the densities are different, right? There's no, there's no reaction taking place to make them stay mixed together. You don't have any kind of agent in there to keep the oil particles spread throughout the water. So because the density is less, those just separate out. And that's how we get the two layers. So how might we use density in real life? Where might you see something that uses density? Do ships use density? Yeah. Yeah, how do ships use density? I don't know anything about ships, so I'm pretty sure it's their no. water and their, their oil and their movements, and how to like get the water pressure to change density, right? All right, so a ship's really heavy, right? If I put a really heavy object, like say I, I took a rock and I put it in the water, what's gonna happen to the rock? It sinks. It sinks, why? It's heavier than the earth. Because yeah. it's dense, it's more dense than the water, and the water can't hold it up. Now, a ship's really heavy, so technically, if I set it on the water, it should sink. Why doesn't it sink? What else does a ship have? Air. Oh, lots of air in it. Air. And what does that air do? It lifts it up, pulls it up. Close. What is it doing to the density of the ship? Because that ship is no longer just metal. It's not solid else. anymore. So well, what, what happens to the density? It's less it's not dense. Because dense. Yeah. there's not, for the, the entire volume of that ship, there's less particles because most of it, or at least some of it, is air. So that air reduces your density, which makes it float. So what happens when a ship, ship sinks? It loses its air. Okay. So what happens? So its to the density? density reduces so or increases. Why? Because it takes on what? Water. water. It takes on water. Exactly. So it starts to sink. The more water it takes on, there's no density difference. It no longer floats, and you have a, a shipwreck. All right. Now, where, where else won't we see density? So this is this is oil on water. Where else might we see that? Oh, like an oil spill. Yeah. So <clears throat> an oil spill, it'll sit on top of the water. So how might we use that to our advantage? You can scrape it off. You can scrape it off. You can find some way to contain it. You, what else you can do to, to the oil? You can burn it. You can burn it off. So, this would have taken so much longer had I had my objects. It's very sad for me. Um, sorry for the slight delay. So, I'm actually going to get you guys, sorry for the participation aspect here. Um, how would you make, think of something really heavy, and how would you make it float? So, what are some heavy objects? Iron. Iron. Brick. 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 Okay. Yeah. You take a brick. How, would, how might you make a brick float? Tie a balloon to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's that good. Yeah, okay. um, so I was like, so if you, if you, what is it, just a regular air balloon, or? Maybe, or... <laughs> Like helium? Maybe? Helium? Why helium? Because it's less dense than air. Okay, so it's going to go in which direction? It'll go up. Yes, okay. So what does that mean for the force of the brick acting on the water? I don't know. So to put, to put this more clearly, I'm going to make her back out. If this is the surface of our water, right, and we have this big brick, and it's applying force down, the gravitational force, right? Mm -hmm. The water also applies force upwards. And we call this the tail. We talked about buoyancy of objects. We call this the buoyant force. Oh, okay. It's not uh, that easy. 
Yeah, B U. Yeah. Okay. Now this helium balloon is going upwards because of its density is less. Um, so it's actually going to reduce this force. So then our buoyant force is going to be the greater force causing the brink to float. So that balance is what makes things float or sink. If your buoyant force is more than your gravitational force, it's going to float. If your buoyant force is less, it's going to sink. So, um, what happens if we, we shake this? They'll mix together. Are they all going to separate back out? Uh, no. no. Why? Well, some of them will combine, like the oil, or not the oil. Actually, well, the oil might combine with the soap, but so might the water combine with the soap. Yes. So the, the water and they and wouldn't the soap separate back out. Their densities are really close. Um, the oil might combine with the soap because the soap actually acts as an emulsifying agent. So it clings to that oil and helps spread it throughout the water. So does anyone want to shake this? <laughs> this is the funnest part, guys. You get to destroy the density tower. Come on now. I might not flip it upside down. Just, yeah, just kind of give it a little, a little stir. You can have a napkin, too, if you don't like it oily. Yeah, so see, see the mixtures. What's the red thing? Emulsifying. The red is the water, colored water. Oh, okay. And blue is the fish. Cool, yeah. Thank you for your participation. <laughs> really super messy. So yes, as you guys predicted, uh, the oil is kind of trying to separate back out, but because of the soap, it's having a little bit of difficulty. The soap layer is completely gone as it's mixed with the water, and their density is now the same. Um, and our other layers didn't get mixed, so they're doing all right. And uh, we're going to call that the end of this demo, this really messy demo. <laughs>